Uh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Liu, as, as I indicated in my opening statement, I, I think it's an important achievement that in this budget uh, you reach primary balance uh, by the year 2017 and begin to stabilize the problem. Uh, but I also indicated that I think we all need to work together, especially uh, to take actions now to deal with what are going to be projected deficits in the next uh, 20 uh, years, and I think that conversation should begin now. Uh, but I, I do want to point out in the spirit of this is not easy to do when you've dug yourself as a country in a deep hole, digging itself out, that there are other alternatives out there. And I want to, and the chairman of the committee uh, has, has put forward an alternative in the roadmap in good faith and a sincere effort to uh, reduce the deficit. So it's in that spirit that I, I just want to point out that when the Congressional Budget Office last January uh, scored that budget uh, proposal, that deficit proposal, that they indicated that uh, in the year 2020, uh, the deficit would be negative 3 point, the deficit would be 3.7 percent of GDP, uh, and that the budget would not be in primary balance under, under that plan as of that date. Uh, and that, in fact, if you go out another 20 years till 2040, uh, the deficit of percent of GDP is 4.5 percent, and the budget is just then getting into primary balance. And, and I point that out, Mr. Chairman, not, not to be cr what, to, to, show, to show you how, how hard it is. And so as, we, as, we, as, as some criticize the President's effort, just recognize that other sincere efforts that were made actually brought the deficit into primary balance later uh, than the President's budget. And there are going to be conversations about different assumptions. But my point is these deficit numbers were, were the result of a good faith effort. And uh, I think the President's made a good faith effort. And we do all need to get together. Now, I want to focus um, to, to discuss the longer term outlook. Uh, I, I want to discuss what's happening today on the floor as it impacts um, as it, as it draws contrast with the approach that the uh, Obama administration has taken with respect to the, the deficit. As, as you indicated, you're, you're talking about significant cuts uh, in domestic discretionary spending. Um, as you know from listening to many of my colleagues, uh, these are going to have a, a real impact and a painful impact in many people's lives. But you have decided that in order to get deficits under control, uh, we're going to have to make those tough decisions, and, and we agree. Um, at the same time, uh, today on the floor, uh, there are proposals to cut immediately and deeply. And I, I just want to read to you a statement from the President's bipartisan, bipartisan deficit commission uh, that we're hearing lots of positive things about uh, from our colleagues about their recommendations and approach. And here, here's what they said, and I quote, in order to avoid shocking the fragile economy, the Commission recommends waiting until 2012 to begin enacting programmatic spending cuts. Another bipartisan commission, the Rivlin Domenici Commission, rendered the same advice. Uh, Mark Zandi and other economists have indicated that deep, immediate cuts, in contrast to responsible and planned cuts over a period of time, the deep, immediate cuts could harm the fragile economy and hurt job growth. If you could please comment on the proposals today for very deep and very immediate cuts and the impact they would have on the economy and job growth, in your opinion. Uh, Mr. Van Hollen, I, I think we have a, a, a tough balance that we have to strike. Um, uh, we agree that it would be a mistake to do drastic uh, deficit reduction um, in this year that we're in, um, beginning of next year. We had bipartisan agreement in December on the tax bill, largely because of the concern that we needed to keep the economy moving, that we couldn't afford the drag that a tax increase in January would have had. At the same time, we need to focus on reducing spending. We need to focus on making decisions that will turn the corner on the deficit. And we can't really wait uh, years to do that. I think our budget has a frame that we think is the right frame for making the tough trade-offs. 
And, and I, we're going to have to work as we go through the remainder of the, the legislation for fiscal year 11 and fisc then as we work together on next year to come up with the right balance. I think it's important that we have the right balance. Um, you don't need to make uh, the kinds of cuts that you're describing uh, in order to get on the right path, but you do need to tighten the belt, which is what our budget is saying. And you know, we're, we're watching carefully as the House continues work. We'll be working with the House and the Senate and then ultimately together to, to do the responsible thing and fund the government. Um, but I think it's a question of, of not, um, not um, mixing uh, uh, too many things together. Uh, the the, the, the long-term challenge is what we've got to keep our eye on. And when I say long-term, in this window of, of the next 10 years, we've got to look to the middle of the decade. And are we on a path towards getting down to a deficit where we stop adding to the debt? And that's what we've tried to do in the budget. I, as some of our um, uh, Republican colleagues have indicated that if they don't get their way uh, in terms of these uh, very deep and immediate cuts that could harm the economy, but if they don't get their way on those cuts, uh, that they would shut down uh, the government. Now, we've seen this movie before. Uh, I know you have. If you could just uh, make clear what some of the impacts of that would be on things like the Social Security Administration and other essential functions of government. Well, I, uh, I, I take the congressional leadership uh, at their word that we all want to avoid a situation like that. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not the right way to run the government, um, and I, I think we have a broad agreement that uh, we have to keep essential services going. Uh, when the government shut down in the mid-1990s, um, it was very uh, unpleasant. Uh, it was unpleasant when people needed to apply for passports because a relative was ill or passed away overseas and they couldn't get a passport. Uh, people started to appreciate things that they just took for granted, but when the government shut down, they stopped. Um, I hope we don't get to the point where uh, we're having to go through that again. And I think if we all work together in a bipartisan way to look for the things we can agree on and take some of the things that we can't agree on and put them off to the side, we can accomplish a great deal. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.